If you want your game to work on a wide range of hardware, you need a settings menu. Lucky for you, I know just how to set one up and it's not that hard. When you're done with this video, you will have a fully working settings menu complete with saving and loading. First things first, we'll need to make a folder and call it UI to hold our UI assets. Next, we will need to create a widget and call it settings menu UI. Then we can open it up and dock it so it is not a floating window. The first thing we need to do is search for and drag out a canvas panel from the palette. Then we need to drag out a border and put a vertical box in it. The, in the border details panel, we need to find brush color and turn down the alpha to zero and hit OK to make it transparent. The next thing we need to do is set the position of our border to 400x, 120y. With a size of 1200x and 840y. Now we need to drag a horizontal box under the vertical box, followed by a spacer. Set the spacer to fill, and set the horizontal box to auto. Next, add a text box to the horizontal box and set it to fill with left align. Under font, set the size to 40. Next, we need to add a button in the same horizontal box, followed by a text block and then another button. Make the text block have a size of 40. Then add another text block to each button. And add the thing that looks like an arrow in each text block such that they face away from each other. Like this. Collapse everything in the horizontal box. Then select the horizontal box and spacer. And press Ctrl C to copy them. Then Ctrl V to paste them. Do that seven times to have eight in total. Now that we have eight settings, we can name them as follows. Window mode, resolution, shadow quality, texture quality, shader quality, anti-aliasing, v-sync, and finally, frame rate cap. Next, we need to name the buttons. The one on the left is to decrease, and the one on the right is for increasing, so I'll name mine accordingly. The one next to window will be called window minus and window plus. The one for resolution will be named res plus and res minus. The one for shadow will be named shadow minus and shadow plus. I think you get the picture, so I'll just name the rest of them and get back to you when I'm done. Next, we will add one more button to the vertical box and put a text block in it with a font size of 40 saying apply settings and rename the button to that as well then we'll need a text block that is the child of the canvas panel with its anchor set to the top middle like this you can then set its position to negative 125x and 28y with a scale of 250 by 76. The font size should be 52. And with the text of options. And center alignment on the text. Finally, to finish off the design, we need to add one last button to the canvas panel. With a text block saying back. 
anchored to the bottom left with a position of 20x and negative 60y in a size of 100x by 40y. This makes a good place to save it, so I will do that. Now that the UI is designed, we still have a few things to set up before we start in the code proper. First thing we'll need to do is go to the graph view and remove the auto-generated events as we will not be using them. Next, we need to make the variables that will be used by our code for the settings. We will need a float called frame rate, an int pointer called resolution, a boolean called vsync enabled, an e window mode called window mode, and then finally, five integers for shading quality, shadow quality, texture quality, AA quality, and finally, resolution index. Next, we need to make bindings for each option by clicking on the text box in between the buttons and then selecting bind create then create binding right click and name it to something memorable do that for all the settings and I'll be back when I'm done Now I need to compile and save so the variables and bindings work. Now we need to set up the bindings such that they work. I will go over resolution first as it is the most complex. The first step is to drag out the resolution int pointer. Then on its output pin, right click, select, split struct pin. You'll then see an X and the Y. From X, drag out and search for to string. No, do the same for Y. Next, you can drag in append node with X in the top, the letter X in the middle, and Y on the bottom. Then finally, drag the return value to the output. With that, you can press X on the resolution to close it, and we will move on to window mode. This one is simpler as we only need to take the variable, then drag a to string, then drag that to the output and close it. Vsync, we need to drag the variable and take it into a branch, then copy the return node. So you have two and connect them to the output of the branch. In the one from true, right on, and in the other, right off. You can do the same as we did for window mode for frame rate by just dragging it out. The four quality setting values are very similar, so I'll just do the one for texture quality. Start by copying the return node four times, so you have five of them. Next, disconnect the execute path from the default one. After that, put low, medium, high, very high, and ultra in the return nodes. Next, add a switch on int node. Then add the variable for the texture quality. Next, add a switch on int from the input. Then press the add pin button five times to add the outputs. Then drag them to the return nodes one per node. You can then copy and paste this for the three remaining values. Just change the variable to the correct one. You can then close them all. Now that we have the boilerplate done, we can start on the code that changes those variables. First thing we need to do is go to the designer and for every button, we need to select the green on clicked to add it to the view graph. I'll do that and come back when they're all added. Now that we have all of those, we can start with the vsync. First, find it. And then from the plus and the minus, drag out the vsync set variable. Then for the plus, check it. You can then put a comment box around it called vsync. Next, find the one for frame rate and drag the variable out next to it. Then drag out a minus node and a plus node for a float and put 30 as the second value for both. Then take both outputs through a clamp node. 
Set the min as 30 and the max at any multiple of 30 you want. I will do 180. Then drag out two set nodes and put the return from the clamp into them. Then finally comment the section. Next we will do the one for window mode. Start by taking the variable out, then put it into a 2 int byte node. Then take a plus and minus node with one in the other slot. Then a clamp int node for both of them with a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 2. After that, take the two sets of variables and put the outputs of the clamp to the inputs a 2 byte node. Then take that to the inputs of the variables. Then finally you can comment it. Next we will do resolution. Start by taking the resolution index variable and then taking a minus and a plus set it to 1 in the other slot. Follow that with a clamp set to 0 and 3 followed by two sets for resolution index. Follow that with a switch on int node with four outputs with a new reference to resolution index. Then pull out four set resolution nodes. For each node's input, pull out a make int pointer node. This is where you will set the resolution. I will use 1280x, 720y, 1920x, 1080y, 2560x, 1440y, and 3840x, 2160y. Then I will set the default pen to 1080p, then comment it. Now for the other four, we can copy and paste the middle of the resolution code, then change the clamp to between 0 and 4. You can then change the variables to the right one for the event and hook it up. You can then comment them if you want, I will to make it easier for this tutorial. If you have been enjoying this video so far, please modify the settings of your YouTube account by subscribing and save them by ringing the bell for all my future uploads. Our settings are useless if you can't save and apply them, so let's set that up now. First, you need to go to the on clicked event from the apply settings button. Then from that we can drag out a get game user settings node. Then from the return value we can drag out all of our different settings starting with frame rate. Then double click the blue line to get a redirect node. And then from it drag it out to set screen resolution. Then do the same for shading quality, shadow quality, v-sync, texture quality, anti-aliasing quality, and finally full screen mode. Then take the variables for each one and match them up. After that, we need to drag out a apply resolution settings node from the blue line. Then a apply non-resolution settings node. Finally, with a save settings node. You can comment it if you wish to make it better to read or look at. Now that we can save our settings, we need a way to load them back when the game starts. First, add an event construct node, followed by a get game user settings node, with the return value going into a load settings node with force reload on. Then follow that with all the set nodes for the variables for our settings except for resolution index as that is not saved and we will have to construct that with information from the saved resolutions. Then we can get the settings as they appear from the light blue line. After doing that it should look like mine. 
then we need to get the resolution index. We will do that by taking a break int point node from the resolution. Then from the X, we will have four equal equals blocks for the four resolutions. First one will be 1280. Second one will be 1920. The third one will be 2560. And the final one will be 3840. From each of those, drag out a branch node with the false going into the input of the next one, like this. From each true, bring out the resolution index variable, set node, and put the following indices in the spot. After this, we just need to add one more thing back at the apply settings code. We need to create a custom event called set all and drag it to the input of the first node. Then back where we set the resolution index, we need to call that function. Then back at the front of this, we need to add another custom event called on start. You should then comment this section and compile and save. Now we need to go to the level blueprint of your startup map like this. And then at the end of it, add a create widget node for the settings menu. And call the on start function. All that's left to do is to make it usable. This part follows from my last video on setting up a main menu. If you have not seen that, there will be an iCard now watch that and come back or you can use whatever you already have and plug this into that it is up to you but with that said if you're using my main menu the first thing you need to do is add a remove all widgets node from the settings on clicked in the menu ui followed by a create widgets node with the settings menu followed by an add to viewport node then back in the settings menu on the on clicked event for the back button, drag out a remove all widgets node, followed by a create widget node with the menu UI and a player controller as owning player, followed by a add to viewport node. Now you have a fully functional settings menu for your game that can save and load settings across game starts. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you feel that someone else might find this video helpful, please feel free to share. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or in my Discord. Have an amazing day and bye for now.